This is currently among the most powerful Android-based TV boxes on the market, designed by one of the pioneers in this segment, Minix. And in the last few years they're mostly focused on high-end TV boxes, and if you look to get unprecedented performance, good features and polished software, this might be a great deal. Welcome, tech for all channel, Michael speaking, and as usual, here's another cool piece of tech, which turned out to be the best TV box I've reviewed and tested this year. And there's so much to say about it, because Minix have done excellent job both on hardware and software level. For the first time ever, I felt like the Nvidia Shield TV used at home is a little boring compared to all the awesome software tweaks the U22XJ has to offer. Of course, we're going to talk about the hardware and the software, but let me first specify the budget range we're talking about. Most websites would sell this device between $160 and $170, and make sure to check about the discount in the description below, because it will save you some money. To make the fun even more complete, I've added this extraordinary good air mouse, it's called the Neo A3 for about 35 bucks, and a gamepad that I very often get asked about, but no, there won't be a link about it, because it's fairly old and Xiaomi no longer manufacture it. So, for a little more than $200, you may get one of the best performing TV boxes, plus enough gear to replace a gaming console, multimedia player, cast receiver, NAS or file server, and a bunch of other appliances you may have at home. While it definitely is pricey, the hardware specs and the software refer to a top-end device. Unboxing gives us the usual premium Minix feeling, most of the specs are visible on the box and we immediately notice the Gigabit Ethernet port, the multiple USB 3 connections and Android 9 mentioned alongside with the HDR10 and HDR10 Plus support. Presentation of the device is excellent and the first thing which surprised me a little is the size, a bit bigger than the usual scale of such TV boxes which is designed in order to provide optimal cooling and performance. Also, as usual, Minix are providing the best in-class solution for Wi-Fi signal reception and the signal strength is excellent thanks to this antenna. On the front, there's the IR receiver and the status LED. On the side, the power button, three USB ports, micro SD slot and a Type-C port that can also be used for OTG. Digital audio out, headphone jack, HDMI and LAN port are on the back and the left area is for the Wi-Fi antenna and the Kensington lock slot which is very rarely to be seen with TV boxes these days, however, a very important feature should you want to secure it while being used at public places. The box is covered by thin layer of metal, which is fantastic for heat disposal. I never ever felt increased temperature or something like that. In fact, following up on the thermal section, the box actually has three thermal sensors reporting information even about the memory state. Would love to share with you the geeky stuff. Processor, that's the Hexacore AM Logic S922XJ, accompanied by 4GB of DDR4 RAM, 32 gigs flash, expandable using a micro SD slot, the many ports already mentioned, and of course dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, basically everything you may need in order to connect to various peripherals. If none of these say a thing to you, well, very fast processor and the rest of the hardware components will provide really decent performance, comparable with top-end devices in that class. Let me also show you this extra remote I got. This is the Neo A3, which is an enhanced air mouse, meaning that it can detect your hand movements based on gyroscope integrated, which is a fantastic way of gaming. I've used the third generation of that same mouse for years, and here are a few of the advantages. Unlike Nvidia Shield, where you're locked into the Android TV certified content, we can actually play games like Angry Birds, because this air mouse can well replace tapping and swiping actions. Turn it upside down and there's the easy to use keyboard, and I can promise you that typing using it is so much faster. Also, the buttons on the front are great for multimedia experience and you have shortcuts to the home screen, recently used apps, even a dedicated settings button, just as it is on the latest Nvidia Shield TV remote, and the option to speak and use Google Assistant as well. So, I guess we can now pay attention to some of the software surprises. Nice option is that you can use the U22XJ both as Android TV, but also as regular Android with tablet or smartphone-like experience. Therefore, Minix ship it with two different launchers pre-installed. The first one is perfect for being controlled with a regular remote, 
and is large tile based, just like the interface of most smart TVs nowadays. The second launcher feels very similar to Nova Launcher, gives greater freedom and is optimized for the Air Mouse or in case you want to use Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. In that sense, with a bit of creativity, you can turn the experience into a home computer-like device and add support for office apps, social media accounts, everything you would usually do on your smartphone or computer, and this is the true advantage of the close-to-stock Android used. I was very impressed with the menus here. Last time I've had a Minix device at home was a few years ago, and I can notice how many improvements have been done ever since. As mentioned, all these settings are just a button click away, and you can practically customize everything. There are some extras on top, which other TV boxes don't have. First of all, roots, which can be enabled or disabled at any point of time. Secondly, Samba server integration, meaning that you can share the files stored on your Minix to any device which is connected to your home network and make the transfer of files to the box extremely simple. They've also added a separate MCU menu and you can configure the auto start behavior and update it separately. Looks like the Minix software team has carefully planned every single bit of the TV box operation, but should you need some help or tutorials, just visit their forums where I also found detailed tutorial about the setup of the Samba sharing option integration. You can do all the usual things that are available on your smartphone, like getting any app that you like from Play Store, Track some multimedia files, playback is super smooth, you can enjoy pretty much any kind of video resolution or bitrate, there also is Dolby License, which means that it will reproduce audio if you use it through the optical port. As for gaming, it's remarkable. I'd say not too far behind the experience that NVIDIA Shield TV will provide, because the U22XJ packs some of the best hardware platform combos, and that was sort of expected. Even after continuous, stressful events, the processor keeps its cool and is usually below 50 degrees, which is around 20 to 30 degrees less than the usual performance of similar sized boxes. The data transfers don't need any praising, the numbers talk about themselves, even through Wi-Fi. The Samba performance easily reaches 9 megabytes per second, and the synthetic Wi-Fi testing reached right away the maximums of my internet connection. While you look at the rest of the menus, let me mention that Minix are one of the few companies that regularly update the software on their devices, so in case you discover bugs, there's a great chance that they will get fixed sooner or later. And again, do not underestimate the significance of the fantastic community you can reach out in the Minix forums website. Now, let us have a chat about what the U22XJ cannot do. It doesn't support Chromecast, you can still stream to it with alternative apps like Miracast or Web Videocaster, but it is not entirely the same as the Google's implementation. The other drawback for some people would be the lack of L1 Widevine certification, which leaves you with SD-only Netflix playback quality. The default YouTube app shows 1080p only, but you can download the Android TV edition, which will allow up to 4K. Other than this, you will hardly find any serious reasons to not like it, and I think it represents a great value pack considering its performance and software capabilities and well deserves its price point. Should you combine it with a gamepad and air mouse, you're gonna be able to really get the most out of the Android world these days, without the restrictions that the TV edition of the software tries to imply lately. With pretty high levels of satisfaction from the U22XJ, we are by the end of this review, I truly hope you've enjoyed it and learned everything you need for the new Minix device. Since the video cannot cover absolutely every single bit of the features, let me know if you have any follow-up questions in the comments below. And if you plan to get your TV box soon, please support the channel by purchasing from any of the links in the description below. It costs nothing extra to you and you can actually find some good discount codes to save you some money. I'm Michael, it's been great to see you again on the channel and looking forward to meet you again in the next episode. Cheers!